So, uh, first of all, thank you very much to, to Leeds Beckett, allowing us the, the opportunity to sponsor the, the event. Thanks to Chris and his team. Uh, I don't know if any of you were who Senga Ban are, um, but quite a big conglomerate, um, mainly seen on the commercial side of things. But uh, I just wanted today to, to do a bit of a speak today to, to let you know exactly what we do in the R&D field and where we are. Um, our aim has become the, the reference for sustainable habitat. Um, we're basically made up of four different sectors. There's innovative materials, uh, includes mainly glass. We've got automotive glass, architectural glass, standard glazing for, for buildings, triple glazing, all sorts of things like that. Uh, then we have some high performance materials divisions. Um, we've got abrasives, ceramics, um, performance plastics, which is a really interesting field. Uh, there's an awful lot being done on that, um, looking at traditional fixings of products and removing mechanical fixings, going to adhesion. Um, I've been in, in experiments lately where we're sticking big two-ton lumps of glass to the side of skyscrapers where you, know, you, just, you just don't think that should occur, but it, it really does. And, uh, and it, it's, it's, it's a really nice field to be working in, looking at how you can speed up production lines, look at modular construction, remove fixing requirements and all that sort of thing, thermal bridges and all sorts. So it's, it's a really interesting field to be, to be working on. Add force is a glass reinforced screening, uh, integrated lighting, things like that. Um, the big part in the UK is construction products. You might know brands such as British Gypsum, Sengaban, Celatex, all within the Sengaban banner. Um, and it, they're as in their own right large brands, but working together, we, we can produce quite nice solutions to, to construction issues or um, overall holistic approaches to buildings. Uh, distribution, um, we have Juicens, Minster are two of the large brands in, in uh, Sengaban UK, um, but in the world we're, we're quite a large player in that. And then there's packaging, which is a very nice job to get into if you can, um, especially in France, because all you do is drive around vineyards selling them bottles. So, yeah, very nice field to get into. Um, who we actually are, uh, last year, over £41 billion worth of sales. We're based in 64 countries, over 180,000 employees. Also, you can see the stats on there. I don't need to read them all out. But we're, we're a very innovative company. We're in the top 100 innovators in the world. Um, and that's what I'm really here to talk to you about. I don't want to talk too much on the stats, who we are, the commercial side of the business. Um, sorry, it's just this slide here letting you know who the brands are in the UK. It's quite a unique selection of manufacturers and distributors. Um, working with partner companies, we can offer an awful, awful lot to the market. But like I say, I don't really want to dwell on that too much today. Uh, more we'll talk about the R&D side of the business. Uh, and in Sengaban, even though in each of the individual brands have their own R&D uh, capabilities and agendas, we have got a separate section which is run um, bespokely for almost blue sky thinking in R&D. So it's challenging regulation, challenging ways of currently that we currently do things, how we, we measure things, um, what products are used, how we build things, and it, it's really, without looking at the impact on the commercial side, looking at real life requirements and areas that need to improve. So it's quite a nice sector to be in because you're not really driven by budgets and things like that. You are, you've got a budget obviously to work to, but within that agenda, it, there's quite a freedom to look at real issues associated with this this country and the UK. I'm the actual R&D manager for the UK, so oversee all of the, the global goings on um, within brands but also integrate all the research that's going on within Europe and elsewhere um, to, to, to better the built environment basically. So as you can see there we have over three and a half thousand people working in R&D constantly, um, seven large businesses, um, I think there's a budget of around 350 million that goes into R&D every single year on a bespoke basis away from brands. So it's, it's, it's a really nice section to be in. And what we're, we're currently doing is, in the past, it's sort of, with this big company, we've got a lot of resource behind us, but you can't innovate or develop without working with your customers and other areas. And what we're really doing nowadays is starting to build up a, a, a network of universities we work with. We've worked an awful lot with, with Leeds, um, Salford, uh, Nottingham, Bath, just to look at different areas of of expertise and build up a database of who are the experts in those areas. And we do an awful lot with startups as well. And um, what we also recognise is being quite a large company, you can sort of uh, put up with 
going through regulatory certification, but a lot of these smaller companies who have very innovative ideas are caught at the first hurdle because they basically can't get products certified because they can't sustain the cost of not selling or being commercially active while they're actually uh, going through the certification process, which can take an awful long time. But one of the big things for us is one in four of our products that we currently sell has been developed within the last five years. And that's one of our corporate requirements. Um, we look at 25% of everything sold as well to be within that. So we really do push innovation of product. Uh, these are the centres that we have throughout the, uh, the world. Um, we've seen France, the States, um, a couple in France, Germany, uh, China. We're just about to open one up in Brazil, so it'll be, be a nice road trip for me. But um, it's quite a, uh, a nice set, uh, resource to be able to pull on every single um, area with us, every single um, uh, sorry centre had their own experts in all fields of building physics, social science, um, which really allows us to develop the products but also work with partners and then ensure that they work in situ. As I mentioned earlier, um, what we really need to do uh, is work more with both our customers and with the people who are coming up with the clever ideas. So collaboration with suppliers and customers, um, then looking at new emerging markets. What a lot of companies tend to do is get pigeonholed into the sector they're in and incremental developments on the products they're in and the sectors they're in. Uh, what we like to do is challenge different areas to look at applications differently. So look at where you could use modular construction, where you could use off-site, where 3D printing, things like that can come in. So we have a, a separate team, which is techno marketing, which is a, a jazzy jazzy sector to work in, jazzy title, but it's, it's basically looking at those emerging markets. Specialist organisations we were talking about before, the small startups. We've got a, an organisation called Nova, where we actually fund or partner with, with startup companies to help them out. And then obviously development of this uh, academic network, looking at who are the experts in the field, uh, working with them to, to actually understand how we can develop uh, for, the, for the future. Uh, we also do a lot of work with... Um, bringing students into business. So we do a lot of sandwich year stuff, we work with KTPs, um, so the Knowledge Transfer Partnership, we just started one with Nottingham, looking at thermal requirements and measuring thermal capabilities. We've got all sorts of ones going through France, Japan, um, but it's all about nurturing the right people and getting the right outcomes and understanding what markets need to better the, the built environment going forward. That's just a, a few of the universities we actually work with in some of the countries where we're in. Um, so obviously heavily in Canada, US, France, um, and the UK we're currently developing. So obviously we've worked extensively with a number of universities, but you know, that's not an exclusive list. Um, when we look at different areas and, diff and look at different areas of expertise, we need to know where, where that, that is within the UK to work with them going forward. Uh, just a quick one on Nova. Uh, last year, there was over 2,700 uh, applications. We partnered with 70 of those. And it's all to do with uh, looking at construction materials, energy efficiency, sustainable environment. Uh, just to give you an idea of what, what those sort of partnerships look like, um, there's four within R&D, uh, joint development agreements, which was the, the bulk of those, so uh, working with companies in collaboration for, for an outcome. Uh, manufacturing agreements, distribution agreements, there's a couple of acquisitions in there where we actually bought the idea from the company, one of those is Green Glue, which is a very nice acoustic product, which is unbelievable when you actually see it, but uh, I haven't got any of that with us today. <laughs> but a couple of examples of those, um, integrated lighting, um, we've worked with a company to look at how we can integrate lighting into building materials. Um, the first of those building materials was a uh, glass reinforced fabric, um, and it's basically a sheet of light. You can put any sort of pattern you want on that and integrate that into any sort of construction. Uh, and it's all to do with looking at, at lighting and efficient lighting within buildings in conjunction with daylighting and our glazing operations to get a, a better internal environment for the health and well-being side of the things. Another one, this is a UK development, it's called uh, Concrete Canvas. It's basically a fibre-enforced concrete sheet, basically. Um, and you put it where you want it spray it with water and it's set solid. So uh, for repair uh, junctions within concrete pipes, um, drainage ditches, that sort of thing, absolutely brilliant product. Uh, and we've funded that from a joint development agreement from day one and it's now being sold throughout Europe as a um, uh, requirement. 
as a as a product that, that works very quickly. Uh, it's very obviously a very sustainable product because it's sort of ten mil thick concrete sheet rather than poured concrete that generally doesn't work too well. Uh, lastly, I just want to talk about sort of fifteen years worth of research, which is uh, my comfort. Um, we fifteen years ago, Eastiva launched a concept called Multi Comfort, which is broadly based on um, Passive House. Um, but it, it basically it takes the building physics principles of Passive House and builds on it in terms of health and well-being of the occupant, but also health and well-being of the building. So there's no point in building a building which is brilliant for the occupant, but will fall down in five years' time because moisture require moisture problems occur with air tightness or th over over thermal performance in different areas. Of bridging occurs all sorts of areas. So it's it's more taking that concept. Building, not building on the, the performance side of it, but building on the comfort side of it for its use. Um, and this, this is a concept that can be used in any sort of application. We're, we're currently doing case studies. We're building a, uh, a multi-use school hall down in Worcestershire, which will be used for uh, assemblies, for uh, sports, drama, generally multi-use. And it's quite a challenge to get a, a building of that type with such a volume down to uh, passive house levels and encompass all the acoustic requirements, heating requirements that are required for all the different act activities to occur. That's just about to, well, pretty much occupied in October, so we're, we're just fitting out at the moment and everything's going to plan. Um, but we are looking for other case studies so in the residential field, um, in the, the um, healthcare field, in the office environment, to actually demonstrate that the theoretical modelling behind this actually works in principle. Um, so all of these cases we are we will be monitoring post completion. Um, the school for two years um, will be comparing it against buildings which are of that, that that type to show where you get the benefit. Um, and it, it's it's really starting to gather pace. Um, a lot of people are starting to look at the agenda of health and well being within buildings um, and, and 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 looking at that as part of the the cost of the building rather than the actual construction cost looking at what it actually costs over its lifetime and how it can can add to healthcare costs through poor poor uh, health of occupants, things like that, time off work. Uh, one of the real areas that I'm interested in is the productivity, so looking at potentially applying this sort of concept to heavy industry. Um, from personal experience, there's a lot of um, absences within that heavy industry environment purely because of the environment people are working in. And if you can make that more comfortable, can we make the productivity of work is better uh, and ultimately make, a, make the, the, the concept pay for itself. Um, but yeah, like I say, the whole principle behind multi-comfort is looking at all the parameters and taking the building from a, a holistic approach, so looking at thermal comfort, audio comfort, visual comfort, indoor air quality, and economic comfort, and, and applying all the products that we have within the Sengaban profile, working with partner companies and academia to actually prove that you can build a building which is commercially viable but returns um, in terms of well-being and, uh, and performance. And that's pretty much where we are as Sangaban. Um, I'm here for the whole of today and tomorrow night at the Rise Awards, even though begrudgingly at the Rise Awards on the 18th World Cup kickoff. <laughs> Don't know who you chose that date. <laughs> Mr Gores, not looking. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Come and find me later on. Thank you.